for which I was appointed preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Thank you. You may be seated. Certainly, as we find Paul writing here, talking to Timothy, and encouraging him and exhorting him to pray for all people, pray for all men. We, we, we mentioned a moment ago about a lot of people on our prayer list and praying for one another. And he said even prayers and intercession and giving thanks for all men and uh, for kings who are in authority that we may live, lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. And certainly that's what God wants for us is a quiet and peaceable life and reverence. He wants that for us. But then he said, he said, this is good and except for the sign of God our Savior. But then he makes this profound statement when he says, for who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. I'm glad today that the scripture says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And that truth being the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to know this book that I'm holding today is full of truth of God. And I look at and I think and I realize that we sometimes we, you know, we, we live in a, in a time that, that you just think people make the truth ever, ever what they want to be. And uh, we live in a time, as he says here, that we're to pray for all those who are even in authority. And, and uh, the other night as I was watching TV and, and watching the news, they were talking about, had it here in Greenup talking about how that the judge had said that uh, uh, we have, in Kentucky, we have to uh, accept the fact of homosexual marriages and said that we have to do that. And boy, it broke my heart. It broke my heart to know that they are trying to force that kind of lifestyle on all of us. When the Bible says that that kind of lifestyle is an abomination unto him. Right. And so I, 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 my first thought was, well, I wish I knew that judge was. My second thought was, no, I need to pray for him for making that kind of a decision. But not just for him, but others. And praying for those folks who are in that kind of lifestyle. And I, and I got a thing today that says, in a picture, it says, which has more value, a bald eagle egg or an unborn child? Well, the federal law protects the child, but the unborn child has no protection because they're allowed to kill a child in a mother's womb and say it's okay. So we realize, no wonder that Paul here is saying we need to pray for those people, and we do. But then he says that all men need to be saved. And so I thought about that. And certainly that is God's will. It's God's desire that all men be saved. Even Paul wrote in, in uh, Romans chapter 10, I believe it is, verse 1, he says that, Brethren, my heart's desire... For all Israel, and, and prayer to God, for all Israel is that, that they all be saved. That all men be saved. And I was thinking this morning, <laughs> as I was gathered here, coming up the aisle this morning, I always come in and have a routine. I come and check the heat, make sure it's okay. Jim's already got all that done, but I go out and check the elevator and things like that because I don't want anybody to get stuck on the elevator again like me and Frida did that time. <laughs> and uh, have to get the ladder and get us out. Uh, but uh, next time that happens, I'm just going to have you throw me down a microphone and I'll preach from in there. But so I always check that out, make sure that's okay. And I got to thinking, I said, well, you know, because I thought about the thought that all men be saved. And I said, well, and we got to thinking, well, you know, even if a person calls himself a, from the, a, I'm from the first Nazarene Baptist Church of God. <laughs> I get to thinking, well, there's so many people today who depend upon their church membership to be in thinking that I'm, I'm saved because I am a church member. But that's not what being a church, you know, you're a church member because you are saved. You don't get to come to church and join a church to get saved, but you're saved by the grace of God. So all men need to be saved. And why does God want all people to be saved? Well, we know that he knows and we know that the reason we want to see people saved is the fact that because if they die in their sins, hell will be their eternal home. And I don't know about you, but I don't want anybody to go there. I want everyone to go to heaven. <laughs> As her great-granddaughter said, to have a new body. And get some pearls. <laughs> you know? 
So I thought about that, and I thought, I think I mentioned to you last Sunday morning in the message about a, a song in an old hymn book, and I, I dug out that hymn book this week, and, and, and here's the words of that song that says, If men go to hell, who cares? And it's a, it's a song, and I won't sing it to you because I can't sight read and tell you how it goes. I should have got Miranda. But it says, While the world rushes on in its folly and sin, and millions go down in despair to reign, where demons are shrieking within, if men go to hell, who cares? Second verse says, While the people of earth are forgetting the Lord, and church pews are empty and bare, there comes to my heart these pitiful words, If men go to hell, who cares? Third verse, Yes, the Father who sent his dear Son to this earth, all our sins and our burdens to bear. He has counted the cost and he knows what they're worth. If men go to hell, who cares? And the fourth verse says, And the Son who was willing to die on the cross, the burdens of lost men to bear, the one who has suffered for all who are lost, if men go to hell, who cares? Verse 5, The Spirit, the Bride, and true Christianity say, Come, for all who are lost is their prayer. The demons in hell send a warning back home. If men go to hell, who cares? The chorus says, who cares, who cares? Oh Lord, who cares? While the world rushes on in sin and despair, if men go to hell, who cares? Wow. And Jesus all the whole time is saying that he said, I want all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So if you will, for the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you, if you're here this morning and you're unsaved, and I want you to listen up, because I'm going to tell you who cares whether you go to hell or not. I think, first of all, you need to understand that God cares. Matter of fact, the song said, while the world rushes on its folly and sin and millions go down in despair, to reign where demons are shrieking within, if men go to hell, who cares? But then he says that the Father who sent his dear Son to earth, he cares. John 3, 16, that simple verse that we, that we read and think about, it said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because it says this then, I think when it goes to verse 17, For God did not send His Son to the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe... And is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the, of the only begotten Son of God. So God cares about you enough to send His Son. I think that when we look at this, He said those who do not believe are condemned already. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world because those who do not believe are condemned already. And you may be sitting there thinking this morning if you're unsaved. Well, I, 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 believe, I believe in God. I, I believe in Jesus. But... Do you really know Him? Do you believe Him enough to allow Him into your life? Do you believe by faith enough that you can repent of your sins and give your heart to Him and know for sure that your sins have been forgiven? God cares whether you go to hell or not. Because let me tell you something. He made you. He made you. Wow, you think... You think a lot of time, and, and I was yesterday. I was at uh, our Melbourne breakfast, and Jack Barker, who we kind of adopted in our family several years ago, his wife just passed away a few weeks ago, and he was there, and he was all he always likes to give give us a hard time, and and uh, I said he, he looked at me and said, "Man, you're ugly." <laughs> I said, "Well, Jack, that's not what I saw when I looked in the mirror this morning." He said, "Well, you must be looking at somebody else's mirror." I said, I just realized something, Jack. I realized that when God made you, and he said, Jack, I'm going to give you some looks. And you thought he said books, and you said, Lord, I don't want any. <laughs> and I look at you, and I realize you got your prayer. Because you don't have any good look, any looks at all. And I got to thinking, I get to thinking <laughs> a lot of times that, that we look in that mirror and we see ourselves and then we look at it and we try to improve on what we have and we need to. I understand that sometimes. But, you know, it's just like the last one time about, uh, 
do you believe in women wearing makeup? I said, I do believe one thing. I believe that a bunch of them need to start wearing something. <laughs> Nobody in here, of course. That was a statement I made to him. But you don't have to look like you had a head on collision with Mary Kay or anything. But what I'm saying is the fact that we, God made you, and He made you in a special way. And so He cares about you. He said, I don't want you to go to hell because you are my creation. I made you. God cares. If men go to hell, who cares? Well, God does. The second thing I thought about is that and if men go to hell, who cares? Well, Jesus cares. Because over in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11, Jesus, the, the scripture says, Jesus came to seek and to save those that were lost. He said, I didn't come for those righteous people, but I came for those who are lost. And you know what? He seeks you. <laughs> he seeks you. Every one of us in this room today that are saved, Jesus saw us and he said, listen, I want you. I want you. I want you to be saved. I want you to come home one day to be with me forever and ever and ever. And I care that you, whether or not that you go to hell. I really care. Jesus said it enough. Jesus said, listen, I care enough that I'm going to go to the cross just for you. What does it say in Peter? He says, you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as gold and silver and all these things, but with the precious blood of a lamb, a lamb without spot and a lamb without blemish. And that's Jesus. And he laid his life down for you because he cares. That's right. He cares. I think perhaps a lot of times in our lives, things happen and we say, I don't care. And so there's some things that, you know, we really say that about, but I don't care. Somebody always cares. Okay. Jesus cares whether you go to hell or not. He cares so much that he said, I'm just going to lay it down for you. <laughs> you know what? I wasn't. I, I lied a, they teased me about this yesterday about my birthday down to Melvin breakfast. And, Teed me about being old, and I said, yeah, but my oldest brother's 21 years older than me. <laughs> and he's here. I'm still the baby. But I think, as, as I get to thinking about, I may be getting older, and I, I, and I wasn't back there. I wasn't back there when Jesus laid his life down on the cross. <laughs> but you know what? As the song says, I was on his mind. He said, I'm doing it for you, Tommy Joe Melvin. I'm doing it for you because I care whether or not you go to hell because hell is a reality just as much as heaven is. Amen. And if you look into God's word, you'll find that Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. He said, this I care enough. <laughs> we went to get a birthday card from my brother-in-law, Glenn, who had his birthday the other day. And so we went to Stultz to look at birthday cards. And so we got this card and looked at it. And we didn't find an envelope. So we went through there finding an envelope. And Jeanette said, is it, is it a hallmark? And so I turned over and said, yeah, it's a hallmark. hallmark. And on the back, they always say, we care enough to send the best. That's the model of Jesus. That's the model of God. God said, I cared enough to send the best. Jesus said, I cared enough to give my best. That you would not have to go to hell because he became your substitute. Men go to hell, who cares? Jesus cares. And the song even goes farther than that. I think that when we, we, we realize that not only does God care and not only does Jesus care, but I want you to know something. Even the people in heaven care whether you go to hell or not. John, in Luke chapter 15 and verse 7 he says this. I say unto you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. Can you imagine that? That the people in heaven care that they rejoice so much. Wow. When a sinner comes home. Oh, listen. I say to you likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. People in heaven care. I have a problem sometimes 
of doing a funeral of someone that's unsaved and, and it, it breaks your heart. Especially when someone comes around the casket and says, oh, you're so much better off. And I'll see you there one day. It breaks my heart. But let me tell you something. I, I think I, I shared with you about a lady in a... In, and actually she was a distant cousin of mine. I'd done her funeral and she was ready for heaven. She had made preparations. She got saved and, and she went to the hospital and made sure that when she got for the, before they took her to the hospital, she said, get my bag. It's got my, what kind of makeup in it? I don't know, some kind. She said, get my makeup. She said, I can't go without my makeup. She couldn't. <laughs> but she got that makeup and took it with her. Just a few short days, she died. She went home to be with the Lord. Her husband, who was a drunk all his life, he'd been in service and came home, and he'd gotten drunk, and he, his legs got cut off, and all these things. So he was on, you know, had two artificial legs, but he stayed drunk all the time. And, and so I'll never forget. As he was coming around the casket that day, he looked at her and said, "I can't promise you that I'll see you in heaven." And I'm standing there. And my heart is breaking. He said, I can't promise you I'll see you in heaven. Two or three months later, I was preaching his funeral. He was drunk in another car wreck and was killed. And that haunts me. That haunts me. And I'm sure today that when we look at this, and if men go to hell, who cares? That ought to be our attitude. It ought to break our hearts when we know people are lost. And here, even in heaven, in the presence, in, in heaven, in the presence of the angels, think about this. <laughs> there is rejoicing. There might have been somebody saying, Oh yeah! Oh yeah, they're coming now. Oh yeah, they're saved. I don't know how it works, but I'll know one day. If men go to hell, who cares? Well, people in heaven care, but I got also news for you. In chapter 16 of the book of Luke, the people in hell care. The people in hell, that's already there. They care whether you come and go to hell or not. Remember, there was Lazarus and the rich man, and Lazarus laid at the gate and begging of, of, of just the crumbs that the rich man would give him. And the Bible says that Jesus says this, and the, the rich man died. He was carried to Abraham's bosom. But the, excuse me, the, the Lazarus died, carried to Abraham's bosom. But the rich man died. And in hell, he opened his eyes, being in torment. Being in torment. He opened his eyes there. And what did he say eventually? He said, he said, listen, if I could, if, if, if Lazarus just could just come and, and touch my tongue with water. But Jesus said there's a great gulf. No one comes across that gulf. Then the rich man finally said, I've got brothers back there. Would you please have someone go tell them not to come to this place? Not to come to this place. The people in hell care whether or not that you go to hell. They really do. And then the psalm tells us that even that the people, well, that the church cares, I should say. That the church cares. Because you see, it's her commission to, to preach the gospel to all the world and, and to carry the name of Jesus and to share it and to, to do their best to win people to Jesus Christ, to bring them to Him. So the church cares. That's why, get this, that's why we're here. Yeah, we come this morning to worship the Lord. We're here to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The church building is here for you to come and to hear the truth of God's Word. And, and to be able to come to, to worship with the brethren, to lift up holy hands unto our Lord. The church cares enough to keep the doors open on Sunday. Now after a while it might be a different story when that storm gets in. But, when it's, a, but it's available. That's why, that's why we, we are here. That's why we try to make it comfortable for you. We have the padded pews and, and, uh, and all these things. I mean, I'd have given anything for padded pews when I was growing up. We had the slats with about that much space between them. And boy, they did pinch. 
Gave you some hallelujah times. But we have nice heat and nice, uh, nice air conditioning. We have everything it takes. We have a great sound system, great musicians, and all these things. Why? <coughs> that we may share with you the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That you might be saved and not go to hell. The church cares. And it's our prayer. It's our prayer of the church that you would be saved. Over in Acts, remember Acts chapter 3, I preached not too long ago, well, I believe it was, Acts chapter 2 and 3, when it said Peter and John about the ninth hour were going up to the temple to pray. The people care, the church cares so much about you that they pray for you. Whether or not you go to hell. <laughs> I care. I care whether or not that you go to hell. Oh, in Romans chapter 1, verse 15. <laughs> Paul writing here again. He said, For I'm not ashamed, excuse me, verse 15 says, For as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you, who are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Wow. Paul says, I'm ready to preach the gospel, and I'm ready to preach the gospel to you. Why? Because I care. Because I care. <laughs> and I understand a lot of times that, that being a, a preacher, sometimes the messages uh, do not tickle your innards, and I never want to do that. And some of them say quite often every now and then, boy, you sure stepped on my toes today. And I don't want to do that. But I sure do want to get God's word to your heart. Amen. That's where I want to land. Especially if you're unsaved. I care about you as your pastor. I care about you that I pray for you. I care about you that I love so much that I love you. Yeah, even, even in your sins, I love you. Because God did that. God does that. God commanded his love for us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. But I want you to go to heaven with me one day. I care. But the question is, the biggest question this morning is, do you care if you're unsaved this morning? Do you care whether you go to hell or not? Well, sometimes people will say, it doesn't matter whether I go to hell or not. It's going to be a good time because all my friends are going to be there. You won't know your friends in hell. Guarantee it. You'll be too concerned about knowing that you're going to be in torment all your life and never being able to do anything about it. Sometimes people think, well, it don't really matter if I go to hell or not. That's, it's just going to burn up anyway. Well, there's going to be eternal fire there, but it will burn forever and ever, and you'll be there feeling the pain. I know it's not popular preaching, but I want you to know something. God didn't call me to be popular. God called me to be faithful. That's right. And that's what I want to be. So you look at it and think, wow, do you care? The Bible says, you know, how shall you escape unless you neglect so great salvation? God said, I care enough, and everybody cares enough. He said, listen, do you care enough to be on the to go to that part where you can say, I can, I can escape hell? Escape it by not neglecting Him. You escape it by giving your heart to Him. Do you real? Do you care that hell is real? Do you? You know. Again, at a funeral one time, a lady stood up. Well, and stood up and said, "If he's going to hell, I'm going to go with him. And anybody else wants to go, come on, stand by the casket." Several of them kind of stood by the casket because they said, "If he's going to hell, I'm going to go." With him. Wow! And they could escape. Them. I just turn into Jesus. Do you care that hell is real? Do you care that hell is hot? Do you care, care that hell is eternal? Do you care that hell is large? Do you care that hell is a lonely place? You're not going to know your friends there. Right? There are a lot of people who care whether or not you go to hell. Matthew chapter 23. In verse 33. It says, You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? How do you do it? Jesus said, and Paul wrote, 
about Jesus. When he said that it's his, his desire for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. I'm glad to report this morning that Jesus cares about you. God cares about you. The church cares about you. People in heaven care. People in hell care whether or not you go there. I care if you're a pastor. But do you care enough to do something about it? Today could be the very moment that you will see God. Amen. We could leave this place today and God says, could say, son, go bring my children home. Or today, God could call you out personally and say, your time on this earth is finished. I, I tell people a lot at the funeral homes and the sermons a lot there that when I was young and I, I would go to the funerals with, with my dad as he would preach funerals and I was just a little thing and I would always realize and look at that casket and everybody I saw was an old person. But now I stand and I proclaim God's word there and I see a lot of young people die. A lot of young people. Age, death has no respect of persons. It can come at any age, any way. The question is, when it comes, will you be ready to meet the Master? Or will you spend eternity in hell? And if you do that, you can't blame anyone at all but yourself. God sent His Son. His Son gave His life. The, ch the church is praying for you. <laughs> the people in heaven care about it. They want to, they want to rejoice when you, when you give your heart to Him. The people in hell don't want you to come there. I certainly don't want you to go to hell. I love you. But do you care? Lord, this morning, I thank you for the message you've given. I, I don't know why you gave it to me, but that's okay. That's not to question you. But Lord, there may be someone here this morning that needs to realize that if they don't give their heart to you, Hell will be their destiny. And God, I just pray by your Holy Spirit this morning, as you speak to their hearts, Lord, and as you convict their hearts today, that they'll, Lord, that they'll just turn everything else away. And I know the devil will be there telling them not to do it today. Wait a little longer. Today could be their day. So, Father, I pray that you'll help them make that step this morning.